you are a design engineer watching this uh, video, then please consider photochemical machining as a manufacturing process. Photochemical machining today is, is one of those processes that's not widely known and one of our goals in this industry is to really educate the engineers, the designers and the product development folks. My name is David Allen. I'm uh, the Emeritus Professor of Microengineering at Cranfield University, uh, the UK. Okay, well the process starts with a, a photo tool is made according to the dimensional specifications of the part. The material to be etched often arrives as coils of material. It is then cut into sheets. We have to remove all the oils and greases from the surface of the sheet, coating it with a photoresist, imaging the photoresist with ultraviolet light, developing the pattern produced, and then etching through the metal with uh, normally an acid, stripping the resist off, and then you have the part made by chemical means rather than by stamping or laser cutting. Our photo tooling can be produced very quickly from a CAD design file. This can be sent by email. Within hours, this can be converted into a working photo tool by a photo plotter or a laser photo plotter, which can produce very accurate tooling. It's a very inexpensive process, can be done very quickly, which means as design parameters change and guidelines change of specific parts, uh, the tooling can be recreated within hours. The process of photochemical machining uh, involves selecting a piece of metal. The cleaning process is very, very important. Without a clean surface to start with, the process will fail. Once the material has been adequately cleaned, it is then coated with photoresist, which may be a dry film or it may be a liquid. The dry coated material is then put into the photo tool to produce an image in the photoresist after ultraviolet exposure. The etching process can be used to etch completely through a sheet of metal or could at the same time be used to etch just the surface of the sheet. So there is a great versatility here which uh, alternative methods of production really can't capitalise on. One thing to remember when using photochemical machining as a manufacturing process is that as the etchant is uh, dissolving away the metal, the holes and perforations are expanding and the outside dimensions of the part are contracting. And so therefore we incorporate uh, an allowance into the photo tooling uh, so that the apertures and dimensions of the part in question uh, meet the dimensional specifications. To give you an example of how we use the surface etching, one can incorporate logos, part numbers, fold lines, commonly known as bend lines, into the parts at no extra cost. Normally at the end of our etching process, the photoresist is stripped away to leave a clean metal part. Inspection is the final stage in the photo etching process. It is carried out to ensure that the parts that you have made are to the correct dimensional specifications, or in the case of an aesthetic part, that you have no imperfections on your finished part. So the fingerprints and defects on the surface are avoided and the customer receives an extremely high quality product. In many ways the complexity of the part does not actually inhibit the production. Etching can produce many different complex shapes and patterns all at the same time. Unlike laser technology where the laser has been scanned across the part, uh, when you make parts by photochemical machining, you can make many, many parts of great complexity all together. During the Renaissance, or maybe even during the Middle Ages, there would be times when you'd have a sheet of metal, or perhaps even a sheet of glass, and that material would be covered with a wax. And then with a stylus, the artist would remove part of the wax where they would want the image to be created. 
brush some acid over the glass or the metal plate. That process would create a fairly complex and beautiful piece of art. More recently, in my 1940s, 1950s, when working with landing gear, some of the engineers thought that if they covered their pieces with wax or some kind of other resistant material to acid, they could remove the material in certain areas by dipping it into a large vat of that acid, taking it out, removing more of the resistant material, putting it back in the vat of acid, and that way they could remove material economically, stress-free, and burr-free. An important part of where we are today was the advent of the circuit boards. Back in the late 50s and early 60s when they were trying to develop these very fine and precise metal plates that needed to have these precise circuits laid down in them. So they basically pioneered to what we're doing on our material today. When we're looking at design parameters for parts in the industry today, typically they're designed with functionality and parameters in mind. Photochemical machining, also known as chemical etching, is one of the ones that's widely used in the industry today. It has a lot of different uh, variables that can be used uh, to benefit the process, cost reduction, speed, uh, rapid prototyping, etc. Uh, chemical etching is very much aware and comfortable with the prototype world. We can make parts quickly and we understand your need to do that. Uh, we can also work with very complex parts. To do all this, our tooling costs are generally very, very low. Tooling for a chemical etching part can be as low as $180, considerably less than if you were going to get it stamped. And because it's drawn on CAD and then photo plotted, the turnaround time for getting that tooling generated is much faster than if you had to wait for a hard tool and die to be made. Uh, it's a very inexpensive process, can be done very quickly, but when you're comparing it to other cutting technologies where hard tools or dies are, are needed, this is a very cost-effective process to produce uh, prototyping parts and even mass production of parts in, in the long run. We're also creating a burr-free finish, which means there's no secondary processes required to give you the parts that are a, a smooth surface or a smooth finish. The ability to test prototype parts in the field and react to the, the parts and differences, bringing it back to the factory and being able to etch it with new parameters quickly and in a cost-effective manner is one clear advantage that the photochemical machining industry as a whole has to the other industries that are out there today. The material to be etched often arrives in the company as coils of material. We have a very wide range of materials to choose from in making our parts. We may need high conductivity, the particular magnetic properties, something which looks good from an aesthetic uh, viewpoint. And we're able to etch many materials uh, with our specially selected etchers. Selection of a base material really depends on the functionality of the material and what it's supposed to be provided. Anything from a cold rolled steel to a stainless steel, covar, titanium. The parameters of the material really are based on the parameters of the part and the type of environment that part will be living in. Chemical etching can be a tremendous option when trying to make thin metal parts. We can work with very complex geometries. Because we're dissolving any unwanted material, as opposed to grinding or stamping or machining or even lasering, uh, we're not adding anything or we're not affecting the remaining material. Typical industries that chemical etching might be involved with would be the aerospace, defense, medical, any electronics where you have a need for thin metal parts that can be either formed or plated. We can offer suggestions on how your part can be made more economically, uh, quicker, uh, more dependably. Uh, if you have questions on how a part can work, what materials could, could be used, we can usually help uh, give six suggestions in that realm. After the inspection process, there's a whole host of secondary operations that can be performed on parts based on the outcome of the part. Items like uh, soldering, or assembly, or plating, um, bending, folding, heat treating. Uh, there's a various multitude of functions that can be performed on these parts to create a finished product 
rather than just a part within a, uh, a sub-assembly. When looking at the decorative side of the etching parameters, really what you're really trying to get across is the differences in parts that can be made. Everything from a bookmark to a Christmas ornament to finished jewelry componentry can be created using the etching process. So the decorative industry within the etching parameters can be wide 